This is KGW News at 5. And starting us off right now at 5 o'clock, a possible answer to what's causing the outbreak now, vaping-related illnesses, the one thing scientists found in every sick patient they tested. A Portland talk radio host outs the whistleblower in the impeachment inquiry. So we wanted to find out, did Lars Larson break the law? Plus, how a stranger on horseback helped find a little girl who got lost in the woods. First at five, a walkout at Westland High School. Students say they're tired of the bullying and vandalism they've been seeing against students who are part of the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. This morning, they left class. They wanted to bring awareness to the district. Joranary explains why students say they haven't been feeling very safe there for the past couple of weeks, Joe. Well, you guys, dozens of students and parents were in support out here at Westland High School. They poured out in front of the high school, and they were joined by fellow students and parents who were lined up across the street. Now, some of the parents and students I talked with say the bullying has been going on for the last couple of weeks. Students with the Gender and Sexuality Alliance plan today's walkout. Along with the bullying, they say has been increasing. They've also been upset with the Chick-fil-A food truck that has been on campus during home football games this year. This year, the Booster Club contracted with the fast food chain. Chick-fil-A has had a history of supporting organizations that have worked to ban same-sex marriage and prevent certain rights to the LGBTQ community. At today's walkout, I talked with one parent who said her transgender son has seen some bullying lately. She wants to see the district take more of a stand to, to treatment of students they say they've been experiencing. I think it's time that like maybe the school district in general realize that there's a big broad spectrum of students that they represent and they should be inclusive of all of them. So inclusion's a big one. There was a group of freshmen who planned a counter walkout. We tried talking with them, but a spokesperson with the school district told us he didn't feel comfortable having the students on camera without the permission of their parents. Westland High School is hosting a playoff game tonight. And Dan, a spokesperson told me the Chick-fil-A food cart will be on campus tonight because the Booster Club is under contract with them. Got it. Makes sense. All right. Appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. We want to tell you guys now about a possible major breakthrough today in the investigation into really what's to blame for more than 2,000 vaping-related lung illnesses across the country. We're hearing from the CDC now. Officials there tested lung fluid samples from 29 patients, and they detected vitamin E acetate in all of them. Now, this isn't the first time officials have discovered the compound in vaping fluid, but the CDC says now the latest test results show more direct evidence that the chemical could be what's to blame here. Vitamin E acetate is a chemical oil that's derived from vitamin E. It's usually you know, pretty harmless. It's taken in a pill form. Sometimes it's on cosmetic things. You put it on your skin like in lotions, but they say it becomes very dangerous when heated and inhaled. A lot of people still talking about this. Portland's conservative talk radio host Lars Larson revealed the name of the man he believes is the whistleblower, the one who sparked the impeachment investigation. Today, Larson said he's had no pushback for revealing the name, but some members of Congress, including Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, are furious and insist the name is protected by law, which made us wonder if it is or not. KGW's Pat Doris looked into that for us today, Pat. Well, Laurel, it has been an interesting question. It turns out the answer is mostly not protected. The inspector general who handled the initial complaint does have to keep the name secret, but once it's out, it's likely fair game. In the tension and intrigue that appears to surround our nation's capital, the name of the Trump whistleblower may have slipped out. President Trump said Sunday it should be released. The senator tweeted a link to an article with the name Tuesday and then Wednesday, the president's son tweeted a link to another article with that same name. And Thursday, Lars Larson said that same name out loud when he appeared on a Fox Network show. How can all that happen when so many think the whistleblower law protects the person's name? Senator Ron Wyden wants to know. There are a host of protections for whistleblowers, and I'm sure there are going to be some who are going to try to parse what those laws are about, I think they're crystal clear, and that is protecting whistleblowers is embedded in our laws. Except that it's mostly not. The actual whistleblower law protects the person from retaliation at work, but it's only illegal for the inspector general to release the name. The law does not say anything else about keeping the name secret. Law professor Tung Yin said it is not illegal for most people to say the name although the person might be able to sue for retaliation. You know, in a highly charged political context like this, you could get death threats, you can get um, uh, harassment and so on. Um, and so, you know, 
it's not a frivolous argument to say that in this context that that would be some kind of retaliation. The law does protect the whistleblower from retaliation at work. They cannot be fired or demoted, for example. And it might be illegal to release the name if the intent of releasing it is to mess with the congressional investigation. But our law professor thought that's kind of an unlikely argument. By the way, we are not reporting the name because we've not been able to confirm that it is indeed the actual whistleblower. Back to you, Dan. Good stuff, Pat. Thank you. I think people really need to hear this context with all of this circulating what people are talking about. So thank you. So with this new year comes a critical count for our communities. In a few months, you're going to start getting some stuff in the mail from the Census Bureau. They're going to be asking you to respond online and through the mail and over the phone. Morgan Romero is covering the 2020 census over the next several months. And Morgan, it's really crucial that everyone across the country respond. Yeah, exactly. That is the message, making sure everyone is counted. But of course, it is a huge undertaking. Data from the census determines representation in Congress, and it dictates how billions of federal dollars are allocated for things like Medicaid, housing, infrastructure, roads. But sometimes the very people federal programs help are the hardest to count and are therefore underrepresented. People who are homeless fall under that category, as do immigrants, minorities, those who live in remote rural areas, seniors and young kids. The Census Bureau is trying to reach them through partnerships. So partnership specialists that they hired are building relationships with different organizations, state and local governments, nonprofits, healthcare clinics and corporations to reach those people. One example, Virginia Garcia Memorial Foundation. They work with immigrants and low income Oregonians who say they're fearful of responding. People who might not be here with documents um, would not feel, they, they live their lives behind the scenes. And the idea of getting counted in a federal process is very scary. What we really want people to know is first of all, there is no question about citizenship on the census. And secondly, we want them to know that that information will not get shared with any other agency in the federal government. Partners like Virginia Garcia are doing outreach, educating the people they serve and working to dispel rumors like one you just heard. They want to make the census as easy and accessible as possible for the people they serve since this year it'll be mostly done online. But more than anything, the Bureau wants you to know the census is safe and secure. Your information is protected. In fact, federal law is very clear, Laurel and Dan. No personal information can be shared. All right, got it, Morgan. Thank you so much. Good insight there. A little girl back home after getting lost on a trail in Clackamas County yesterday, all thanks to some team effort here, a good Samaritan helping deputies to find her. Got some video to show you here. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office shared this with us. Tammy Stevens was riding her horse along the trail near the Malala River Recreation Area, and deputies say the toddler was on a trail with her grandma when she ran off and got out of sight. Tammy happened to be nearby with her horse and dogs, so she joined in on the search. About 20 minutes later, Tammy found that little girl 70 feet up a steep hill. Paramedics checked the girl out, made sure she was okay. She is back with her family tonight. Thank goodness. Well, this morning, did you notice planes circling above Portland this morning or the circular contrails left behind? It was a popular topic of discussion on social media, not to mention all the calls we got asking, what was up? <laughs> Turns out the weather is to blame. We always like to blame the weather. The Port of Portland says dense fog at SeaTac forced the planes to circle over Portland until they got the OK to land. More than 200 flights to and from SeaTac had some sort of delay. The conspiracy theorists were having a field day with that today. If you are scaling a rock or a climbing wall, the goal is to get to the top, right? But we all have our own way to get there. And rock climbing, as in life, you can't get there alone. Because it's really great to climb with people that are like you. Like, obviously, we're not exactly like each other. We all have different situations. When we come back, we'll introduce you to a remarkable group of climbers in Portland, all finding their own unique way up. I'm Matt Safino. It was another beautiful day, and it's, well, the sun's gone down, so the daylight's ended. But, boy, we were in the 60s once again. And back to those contrails, you could actually see them in the weather satellite. See those circular patterns there? I'll have more on that for you and, of course, your weekend weather after the break.